Hey everyone, good to see you again. This week we're going to talk about creating the outline for your paper. All right, And the outline really is an important step in developing this paper. It really is the skeleton of your paper, right? You know, so imagine you're looking at a full form body and you want to know what's holding this whole thing together, right? And if you could visualize inside of there, you know, or, or visualize a scary movie, you could sort of see the skeleton underneath it. Maybe that's a cheesy metaphor, but you get the idea. Really, the, the outline is sort of the main building blocks that you're going to build this paper upon. And by developing an outline fairly early on in the process, it's going to help you be very focused and you're going to write, you know, to the point. You're going to think about the points you're going to cover in the paper. You're going to outline them and then you're going to begin to fill in the, uh, the put the meat on the bone, so to speak, so it's no longer just this ugly skeleton. All right, so, so developing an outline is an important step of the paper. And what I thought I would do this week is just sort of create a, uh, just kind of a template for you to kind of think about what should be in there and then kind of go through and, you know, tell you my thought process, how I would go about developing this, this outline uh, to, to meet the aims of this paper, all right? So first thing I want you to do is let's take a look at the course uh, syllabus. And you'll see here that uh, it really has prescribed some of the main ideas that I think you, you can and should use uh, for part of your outline. Okay, so, so it has five main topics that you're going to cover in this paper, five main areas that you're going to topic you're going to cover. So the first is the identification and exploration of key course concepts. Now last week you guys actually did some work on this. You guys started a laundry list along three main areas, right? Bible theology, ministry practice, and personal growth. So you've already done some of the thought work in that, right? Now the next section here is for you actually to do your reflections on biblical and theological studies. So, so you want to think about some of those key ideas that you identified, those Bible and theology ideas that you identified last week, and to think about what are the most significant concepts you learned, uh, and then to provide a detailed descriptive analysis of each of these of these two categories. Okay, so this section here you might title, you know, Reflection on Biblical Studies and Theology, and then have Biblical Studies and Theology. And hopefully you guys are far enough along now where you know the difference between Biblical Studies and Theological Studies, right? Biblical Studies is when you're looking at the text, when you're looking at background issues, you're looking at characters, narrative, those kinds of things. Theology is when you sort of step back a little and sort of come up with concepts that are not just from one text, although that would be called biblical theology, but sort of theologizing about scripture, if you will. You know, so, so, so Christology isn't just based on one narrative, or one story of Jesus. It's really sort of painting a big picture to come up with you know, our, our, our doctrine, our theology of Jesus, right? So, so, so make sure you have those, those separate, right? It's integrated, we know, of course, uh, but you, you can outline those separately. And then under each of those, right, you might have some specific concepts. So biblical studies, you might have some Old Testament, you might have some New Testament, you might break it down into terms of different areas, right? Wisdom literature, uh, historical narrative, right? Gospels, uh, you know, Pauline epistles, right? Uh, and then under theology, you might break it down under some of the classic kind of systematic theology, the way that we look at it, pneumatology, Christology, eschatology, those sorts of things, all right? Um, so that's, that's a way that you could do that first section there, right? So I have two main points, right? So point A would be uh, reflections on Bible theology, Bible, theology, and then under Bible, you might have these different sections, theology, these different sections, okay? And again, when you're doing an outline, it's going to be something like, you know, Roman numeral one, uh, large capital A, you know, numeral or letter one, small a, okay? So you're going to kind of use that standard uh, Roman numeral letters indentation format. And if your settings in Word actually should already do that for you. So it shouldn't be something you have to create from scratch. Typically, when you use the outline function, when you use the number, every time you hit a tab, it will automatically go in there. And if you're not sure how to do that, go into the settings. Um, there's different setting options, actually, that will do like Roman numerals or standard numerals. So it's a good skill to learn. It'll help you create a nice outline here. Okay, the next major section here from the course syllabus is going to be the reflections on ministry practice. How will what you have learned in this program affect your ministry practice? In what ways? What implications does this have for you as you approach your work in ministry, et cetera, et cetera? Okay, so another major section in your paper, all right? So section one is going to be that reflections on biblical theology, 
reflections on ministry practice, right? Now, you might have identified last week like five key areas of ministry, maybe preaching, maybe evangelism, maybe mission, you know, three or four or five sections, and you're going to talk about each of those. In this class, we learned about this, and here's how it's already impacted me, right? So you're not just going to talk about the topic kind of in the abstract, but this is really helping you to, you know, how this has affected your practice. I took this class on missions and boom, we started this missions program. It really helped me to understand, you know, God's heart for the nations, all those sorts of things. Okay, so that's what that section is going to look like. And you might, you know, that's going to be a major uh, Roman numeral and then maybe, you know, one or two or three, not one. Obviously, you're going to have more than that, but you're going to have several sections there. And each of those might have their own little sub points as well. So missions, you know, you might have a section called God's heart for the nation, you know, section one, and then local mission, you know, point A, and global mission, point B. And then global mission, you could break that down into what? Different nations, maybe you actually wanted some missions trips. Um, you know, so try to really kind of think categorically and systematically about the different topics and how you can arrange them in a paper so that it makes sense. And again, the, the, the objective here is to really write something that, that, that the reader can follow. And say, in this section, I'm going to have, in this following section, I'm going to have three main topics. Boom, boom, boom. And then you fill all those out, right? So that's the, really the key to being a good writer is thinking about your topics and outlining, outlining them in a way that makes sense in sort of this hierarchical fashion, right? Kind of a, a hierarchy of topics. All right, your next main section here is going to be reflections on personal growth and development. How has your reflect participation in the program changed you personally? What do you think led to this change? What aspects of the program facilitated your personal and spiritual development? All right, so you, you're again, you're, that's going to be your major topic, right? Your major uh, Roman numeral. And then you might list out some specific areas of personal growth. You know, maybe character, maybe ethics, maybe spiritual, uh, spiritual formation and spiritual disciplines. You know, before this class, I didn't have much of a prayer life after, uh, before the program. After the program, I, I prayed devoutly. We read Richard Foster's, you know, Spirit of the Disciplines book, and it really taught me the importance of prayer and the power of prayer, right? Okay, so you're going to talk about some of those main areas that you learn in terms of per personal growth and development, the leadership development, right? All those kinds of things that you learn in different uh, areas of the course, and then you're going to list all those out. And you'll talk a little bit about those from the curriculum, right? Citing your sources, all that kind of stuff, and then the personal reflection and application, all right? So each of these sections is really going to have a lot of that. Um, you know, perhaps the, the biblical and theological one might be the more sort of conceptual one where you're going to list those things out. But again, I, I would encourage you to talk about your reflections. Why was, you know, why did you decide to talk about Christology? You know, maybe you just, you know, really fell in love with Jesus in the course of the program, and that was your favorite topic and doctrine, and every time you came across it, it was just really, uh, you know, engaging and exciting to you, and it helped you understand, you know, our Savior better, and, you know, it wasn't just academic to you, but it really transformed your mind and your heart and your thinking, all those sorts of things. All right, um, and then uh, and then the final section there, reflections on lifelong learning, and this might be a little tougher. You know, you're kind of projecting into the future on this one. I think um, I don't know that you really had a class per se on lifelong learning, uh, but hopefully over the last few years, couple two three years, you've been in the program, you've done some thinking about. Yeah, I really like to learn. I like to study. These are particular areas of study. I've always told myself if I had free time to read whatever I wanted, this is the kind of stuff I'd read. So talk about that. Talk about how, um, you know, talk about your own desire and development as a learner per se and how you feel that's going to carry on uh, besides the program, okay? All right, so that's kind of the real meat of this paper is to think through each of those areas to fill them in, right, in sort of this hierarchical area. And then, of course, in your outline, you're going to have you're going to have some other kind of, you know, housekeeping things, right? So you're going to have your introduction and your thesis, right? So we worked on that a few weeks ago. So make sure that's the very first section in there, right? Introduction, that should be bullet point one or Roman numeral one, right? Um, in your introduction, and then just don't put your introduction in this outline here, but you're going to say introduction and then any main subpoints under that introduction, one of those should be your thesis statement. I would say for the outline, go ahead and include your thesis for the other students that are reading and reviewing it. Uh, at least they kind of know, okay, this is the main point that this person is trying to make in the paper, all right? Uh, and then you'll have your main sections here, and then, of course, you're always going to have a good conclusion at the end of your paper as well, right? So, and again, you, you haven't written the conclusion. You probably know you don't know exactly what it's going to say, but at least leave a marker in your outline there for conclusion, all right? Uh, that would probably be a good approach for now. All right, so I would say you, you should probably be able to do this whole outline in, you know, a page 
maybe a page and a half. Don't worry about spacing and those kinds of things. Actually, maybe leave maybe leave half a space. It might be a little clutter looking if it's all like this. So leave a little bit of space in there, but no more than a page and a half, uh, page, page and a half to cover all these main topics. All right, and then of course put your bibliography, put a line item for bibliography in there as well. Um, so that's about it. Obviously, everybody's outline is going to look a little different, but they should all have these main components. Feel free to... That's my dog. Hey, would you just relax there, doggy? That's Chalupi. He's getting all excited. But make sure you... Uh, you, you, can, you can customize the title a little, a little bit if you like. I, I, you know, I'm all for customization. Make it your own. But you should have these main components, though, from the syllabus as well. So anyhow, that's about it. I hope this helps. God bless you guys, and I look forward to seeing your work.